Welcome back, everyone, and thanks for uh, joining us this afternoon. Um, I'm Andrew Norman from ShipStation, and I'm uh, delighted to be hosting these sessions on the final day of uh, Tame Bay Live. Just a reminder uh, on some housekeepings and some suggestions for the afternoon. So do make use of the networking areas on the Totem platform, such as the coffee tables. Uh, don't forget to visit our, our partners showcases uh, so you can meet with the sponsors. Um, please do submit questions using the uh, question function on the Totem stage, uh, which I will then manage um, and, and give to the presenters in this session. And again, just a reminder, the Totem platform will be open for an hour uh, following um, the event, uh, the whole day to allow some more time for you to, uh, to network. So this session will run for 50 minutes. We've got a lot of content, three great speakers, um, 50 minutes, sorry, 40 minutes of presentation and 10 minutes of Q&A. Um, obviously, I'll keep us on time. I'm sure we're going to get tons of questions, so I'll do my best to answer as many questions as you have in the session. So please do put them through. Um, gives me great pleasure. Really happy to um, have the three of you today. So I'd like to introduce Gareth Cummins from eDesk, uh, Jerome Rudin from, uh, and sorry, and Odalena uh, Kostova from, uh, from Google. Welcome, guys. Great to have you. Um, Gareth is Chief Technology Officer eDesk, uh, otherwise known as Excelco, I guess formerly Excelco for many of us that are in the, in the e-commerce community. Uh, and Gareth leads the product development, uh, architecture and engineering functions across um, the extensive suite of award-winning uh, products, including eDesk. Uh, Jerome, um, looks like Jerome started out on, on the other side of the table at L'Oreal, um, uh, running e-commerce uh, in the Netherlands. And then for the past six years, he's been working at Google in EMEA and Asia Pacific, uh, working in various product lead roles. And Jerome is now growing the product partnerships uh, within the e-commerce uh, technology companies in EMEA. And Olena, um, great to have you. Um, Olena helps Google partners to get to the next level with Google Ads by teaching, uh, coaching, and mentoring. Um, and I saw on uh, Olena's LinkedIn page that you're, uh, you write very frequent uh, blog articles and YouTube uh, content every week to, uh, to give best practice to uh, to everyone out there. So listen, great, um, great to have you. I think Gareth is gonna start us off with some uh, video content and then I'll let the uh, the guys jump into their presentation. So over to you, Gareth. Great, so thanks, Andrew. So I'm gonna jump straight into this video and then I'll talk a little more about the presentation, but uh, without further ado, I'm gonna start this video here. As we consider what the world could look like after the pandemic, one thing is certain, we have all changed and those changes are far from over. Thousands of Google searches across Europe, the Middle East, and Africa showed that our so-called normal continues to evolve. Different needs, different behaviors, different habits. Our daily routines have been disrupted. And we're turning to search more than ever to find everything from security and community, to new skills, and ways to stay mentally and physically healthy. Changes in our daily routines have broken our typical habit loops, making way for new habits to form. So which habits will stick? We've looked at the ways life has changed across the region and what these new long-term habits are. We continue to search for knowledge. We've found new ways to tackle daily tasks. We built new skills and found ways to share our knowledge. We'll keep searching for balance, including new ways to work. Better ways to unwind. ways to stay closer to nature. And we'll keep looking for fun. After social distancing measures saw us looking for occasions to celebrate remotely. New ways to eat out at home. Ways to enjoy time together, however far apart we are. 
ways to cheer each other up. And new companions, along with the best ways to look after them. We've also been finding and will continue to find the unexpected by staying informed on what consumers are searching for businesses can prepare for today and tomorrow find your customers and be ready for what's next so welcome to the master class with uh, myself garrett cummings uh, as as andrew already said i'm the cto of edesk uh, we're an e-commerce platform that looks after, you know, uh, Google search in terms of shopping, uh, re repricing with repricer.com, uh, customer support with desk help, and last but not least in terms of review management with our feedback module. So really happy for uh, have everybody here today. I uh, hope you enjoyed this presentation. We thought we'd open with a video because I'm sure lots of people have be seen slides and lots of conversations. So we thought we'd uh, gently break you in in terms of a video. Um, delighted to be uh, joined by Jeroen and Elena today from, from our partners in Google. Uh, really excited to talk about Google Shopping, uh, what it can do, how it can help you grow your business. So so Jeroen uh, and Elena are going to kind of drill into some of the specifics there and some of the more detailed orientated stuff. Um, I, I just before we get started with that, I just wanted to talk generally about how you can grow your e-commerce business. And for ourselves in eDesk, we think think about it in this kind of flywheel of, of growth in terms of four different sections. And it's be found, be competitive, uh, be responsive, and be trusted. So be found. Okay, so if you're selling off your own website or web store, really important that you're driving, obviously, traffic to that website and web store. Very, very competitive landscape out there. Uh, lots of, of e-commerce sellers, obviously, because of COVID in the past 15 months, Lots of, uh, of new companies coming online, trying to sell online. So really, really important that you can be, be found. And this is where the, the smart shopping uh, solution uh, with, with Google and Edesk can really help you be found. So you really want to drive drive conversions, drive, drive clicks, drive traffic to your website and web store. Obviously, you have stuff like SEO, which is like good content, good images, well-written descriptions. Uh, but what the smart shopping uh, integration allows you to do is allow, allows you to be listed for free across Google Shopping, but also to you know spend uh, some, some ads and some revenue to drive that traffic towards your, your website and web store. And again, when you're trying to drive that growth, trying to drive that business, that's really, really important. You need to be found on Google. When people are searching for your product, you need to be popping up at the top of the list. So really, really important. The second thing is you need to be competitive, okay? So you need to have the right price. Uh, once you're found, Obviously, price is very, very key, and you need to be pricing correctly against your competitors consistently across all the different marketplaces. And that's where repricer.com comes into play because you want to automate that. You want to be able to set that in the background. Uh, you know, pricing ever stops, right? It's running 24 by 7. So, again, you need to be, be competitive. Uh, so, once you're found, you need to have the right price. Third piece, be responsive. Okay, really, really important. Customer support, really vital to growing that online business. If you want return customers coming back to your website and web store time and time again, you have to provide an excellent service. Excellent customer support is the bedrock of e-commerce. Look at Amazon, you know, really, really important in terms of how they drive uh, customers at, at, at the number one thing in terms of customer support, put the customer first. Uh, again, when it comes to e-commerce, you have to do that. And that's across all the different channels. You've got to remember, you're going to have customer communications coming in for, for email, via chat. Uh, through different marketplaces, uh, through your, your social channels, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. So being responsive, providing consistent customer support, drives that return business to your website, drives that return business to your web store. Again, very, very important. Last but not least, be trusted. So, so again, your trust, your reputation, that's how you build uh, you know, your, your growth within your e-commerce business. We all do it as consumers. When you're going to buy a product online, what do you do? You look for reviews. You look for the review review rating. Okay, and you look across different channels. So again, really, really important that you're managing your reviews. You're automating that so that when you when you are found, when you make the sale, when you provide great customer support, you can ask for that review and therefore grow your reviews and grow your business. And we think of this flywheel of growth and really, really important. As you lean into that, you can grow your e-commerce business and drive up your sales. So. I'm going to hand over to you run now and he's going to talk more about what google have seen in terms of trends you know obviously in terms of COVID, the past 15 months lots of different things going on so you going to talk about that before handing over to elena who's going to drill a little more into smart shopping campaigns and how it can really help help you grow your business so i'm going to hand, hand over to you run now and uh, he's going to take it from for the next few slides thanks a lot gareth uh, hi everyone very nice to be here to present uh, together with uh, with edesk uh, so yeah, if we can just go uh, to the next page, uh, Gareth. Uh, so yeah, the, the past 12 months have been incredibly difficult for most, right? And 
Um, there's likely not a single person in this world that has not been impacted by the COVID pandemic in, in some shape or form, of course, some more than others. Um, but who would have guessed what this picture would actually mean if we showed it to you in 2019? Um, yeah, it's really, really impressive to see how people kind of reinvented the way uh, that they interact with one another, uh, but also with the businesses around them. And this is really impactful for, um, for the way that you should, uh, yeah, should organize your business. So if you can go to the next slide. Um, so yeah, in 2020, we have seen that this has resulted in, a, in digitization efforts fast forwarding with about 10 years in a matter of six months. Um, so let me start by sharing a few insights into this acceleration. So um, we see that online tools have been a lifeline for many in this COVID pandemic. Uh, they are helping people to stay connected, to work remote, remotely, uh, and to access news and information and shop for the essentials. For example, we have seen an increase of 197% in online grocery shopping, and 80% of people are actively trying to minimize the amount of trips uh, to their physical store. So really impactful stuff. Um, and then um, this not only, you know, uh, we don't only really see this in the, in the grocery space, we see this across the board. As you can see in this chart, people are moving online across all industries with massive implications for the way companies conduct their business. This results in a headwind for companies that heavily rely on their physical stores, but also in a tailwind for digital companies. And I, I think it's important to notice that as well, especially for those companies relying on those um, on those physical stores, this means they have to go through a digital, digital transformation in a matter of months, which would have normally pre taken perhaps five years. So um, if we zoom in a little bit into the, the commerce space, we see that uh, we see this, this shift uh, happening acro across all categories, essentially, especially the shift for fashion is really remarkable uh, from 36% of purchases happening online in 2019 to 67% of purchases happening online in 2020. So obviously uh, a massive, massive shift with, with, with many implications for, for you as online sellers. Um, but the pandemic hasn't only moved us online, It'll, it has also changed the way that we engage online. In this chart, you can see the usage of Facebook, Netflix, and YouTube um, websites at the top of this, uh, of this chart. Um, and the use of the app versions of those websites at the bottom of this chart. And it's actually really interesting to see that for the first time in many, many years, we see a bigger growth in usage of websites compared to apps. Uh, so this is also important for you know, your considerations to like, how do you prioritize the development of your, of your website versus your app um, with people being at home or people using websites more. So um, at Google, we try to help companies with their digitization efforts with various tools and product updates. So let me start by introducing two really useful tools for retailers. Uh, I would highly recommend you to check them out yourself as well. So you can just, uh, as I'm talking about them, you can, uh, can scan the QR codes that will bring you to those tools uh, and, uh, and you can try it out yourself. Uh, and then after I've introduced those tools, I'll hand it over to, uh, to Aurelena, who will talk a little bit more to uh, the product updates that we have uh, that are also making it easier to, to sell online. So uh, the first tool uh, is, uh, is the rising retails categories tool, um, which is presented on, uh, on Think with Google. It allows you to identify which categories are trending week over week or month over month or year over year. Uh, for example, in Germany, I can see that hula hoops are trending year over year over year. And I was quite surprised. So after a bit of research, I realized that hula hoops are actually being used across many countries to educate kids on social distancing. Now, these are insights that you may not know, uh, you know by, by common logic, but that a tool like this can really help you uncover. And as a, as a merchant, you can, uh, you can play into these, uh, to these trends. So uh, going to the, to the next tool, um, the second tool I wanted to highlight is the market finder tool. This tool helps you to find um, the next market to expand into. Uh, you fill out your website URL, super simple. Uh, the tool then evaluates the categories that you sell online all automatically. Uh, you then select where you would like to sell. Um, is this within the US or is it globally? Uh, the, tool, the tool then shows you uh, what your biggest opportunity markets are, taking into consideration various elements such as market size, but also uh, auction competitiveness from Google. Uh, so it can really uncover like where you have the opportunity to grow um, with um, uh, yeah, keeping a budget in mind. 
So um, I'll now hand it over to Ardelena, who will tell you a bit more about relevant product, product changes to make selling online accessible to the masses. So uh, Ardelena, over to you. Thank you, Jeroen. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, so without, uh, with the tools that Jeroen uh, mentioned before, you can start kind of thinking on how to, um, let's say, what products you, you want to, to sell and how to organize your website. Uh, but if you're already a e-commerce seller and you have specific products in mind, you want to get more sales and more views, um, there are some tools in Google we can use. Uh, so from uh, later last year, we have free listings, uh, which is basically the e-commerce results on Google, which used to be only ads. And now actually these are available um, to everybody also for free. Um, how it works is you need to have a feed and you need to have it uploaded to Merchant Center, which automatically, if your feed is approved and everything's fine with the products that you're selling, this means that these products are going to show for free uh, when someone is searching for products like these. We see that uh, small uh, business owners especially see great results with these. Uh, as you can see on this uh, slide, there is like a layer of ads and then there is the free results. and Actually, uh, business owners see 50% more clicks and 100% more uh, views on their ads after starting to use uh, free listings. Uh, but free listings can only take you this far. Um, there is something else that I want to talk a little bit more about, which is called uh, smart shopping campaigns. So smart shopping campaigns combine the simplicity of, um, to, to manage campaigns. It's fully automated. Uh, it is designed for performance, so it's only focusing on getting you more uh, value or return on ad spend. Uh, and it has an automatic reach across multiple uh, Google platforms. Let's see how this works. So imagine the day of a small business owner. Uh, they wake up in the morning, maybe they uh, take their phone, look for uh, location to drive to with uh, Google Maps. And then they check their email, maybe they use Gmail or Workspace. Uh, then in the lunch break, checking social media, a YouTube video in the afternoon on DIY uh, to help them uh, do some small task. Um, then in the afternoon, some uh, research on Google. And finally, in the evening, reading blog articles. This could be the day of a lot of people across uh, different, uh, different vocations. Well, free listings uh, will get you only this far. So think about like during this whole journey, there are a lot of Google properties that uh, you can see ads on or e-commerce offerings. Well, with free listings, you would only be able to show your uh, offerings when someone is actually searching in the search box or Google, of Google. So as you can see, this is only a small part of the journey and people access a lot of other Google properties throughout their day to do their research. Well, smart shopping campaigns covers the whole journey. Uh, it uh, goes across Gmail, YouTube, and the whole uh, display network, including Google search, uh, and it will show your product not only uh, to new visitors, but it will also automatically do remarketing to visitors who maybe have purchased uh, or have put a product in the cart and remind them to put it um, to, to actually complete the purchase. Um, we can see how these products look in the uh, different, um, uh, different properties of Google. So here you can see the search results, display network, YouTube, they can show up under a video. Uh, and also Gmail, once you expand the promotion email, you can see a list of products. This is all generated from smart shopping and cannot be done by free listings. Free listings will only get you on the search results. How does smart shopping work? Uh, it takes into consideration your business goals. So it works with the business goal in mind. So the simple business goal is maximize conversion value. So get you uh, more sales, basically higher value sales uh, for the budget that you have. But you can also give a specific goal, a specific return on ad spend. For example, I want 300% return on ad spend. And the campaign is going to try to give you this return on your budget. Um, it uses uh, very uh, first class machine learning technology. 
uh, for automatic optimizations across all intent signals. So takes into consideration signals like uh, previous purchases, like behavior, previous searches of the users, whether they've been on your website or they haven't been, what's their intent, what's the meaning behind this search query that they're doing, is this what they're looking for? Uh, and it is, of course, to give the most relevant uh, results to our users, but also to give, to give you more opportunities to show your product to the most interested users. Uh, and the best part is across Google, so you don't have to create separate campaigns for YouTube, for Gmail, for display. It is all automated and all running towards one goal in one place. Also, yeah, the main, the main um, kind of uh, pluses of these campaigns that you reach, you, the reach that you have is, uh, is truly remarkable across Google search, uh, our uh, search partners, uh, the display network, which includes uh, thousands of websites and uh, online applications, uh, YouTube and Gmail. Uh, it is uh, only one feed that you need, so you can use the same feed that you use for your free listings, and this feed is going to be uh, basically the only one that you will need uh, as long as it's up to date and it's all approved. Uh, and your budget is automatically allocated and optimized across all these networks and a variety of uh, ad formats. So you only have to upload your feed, add a few images, your logo, and a couple of headlines and Google will do the rest for you. So no need of uh, difficult uh, banner creation or special uh, skills in order to, uh, to make your ads look great. Google will do this automatically for you. And I would like to finish up with uh, an example. Uh, here is a video from someone who was very, very successful with the smart shopping campaign. Let's play the video. With a flip of the switch, you transfer to a different world, and the fact that that's possible is amazing. At Start Select, we created a service which supports gamers around the world to get the most out of their free time. We sell digital games as a download code, which you can redeem for a full game instantly. Being an e-commerce company means that online findability is a very important factor. We need all the tools and tactics uh, that are available in the market to, with a little effort, have a massive impact. That's where uh, Google Smart Shopping comes in. <laughs> we provided Google with our complete product portfolio with all the games and let Google do the optimization. And it becomes a magic box. And you're not sure what's going to happen next. In the end, for us, confidence was built based on results. The return on ad spend has increased by four times. The smart shopping campaigns get way more impressions and clicks than other shopping campaigns get. We immediately saw increased sales numbers on games tenfold, which was immense. That made us decide that we will expand the use of Google Smart Shopping within our company towards other product categories as well. It's easy to use, it's easy to set up, and it takes little time to manage. We can use that time wisely by, for instance, on expanding outside the European zone, so we will become a global company. I can definitely say that Google Smart Shopping has become a successful asset to our team. And that's all from my side. I will pass the word to Garrett. That's great. Thanks, Alina. You're on. That was, uh, I think, really interesting. Great to see the trends and the growth and lots of different things happening across the wider ecosystem and then see the, the power and effect of, of smart shopping campaigns and you know it really it really allows you to grow that business and and let you focus you know we're a big believer in EDS in terms of automation what you can automate you should in terms of to grow your e-commerce business because when you automate certain things then you can focus on other aspects to grow and, and smart shopping campaigns is a real a uh, real core thing that we've seen with our own, within our own customers. So uh, uh, we've seen uh, similar stories across multiple different clients who have enabled smart shopping campaigns through our EDS platform. We've seen returns on ad spend from, from 8x to 10x. Even one of our clients have seen 15x. So for every dollar they're putting into the into the ad spend, they're getting $15 back in terms of sales. I mean, those those kind of conversion metrics are, are, are unbelievable, really. So, you know, and we've built this core integration with, within eDesk uh, with our partners in Google. Um, Again, when it comes to eDesk, we're, we're all about the multiple channels. So no matter if your web store is on uh, Shopify or Magento or, or BigCommerce or WooCommerce or PrestaShop, we have the native integrations built within our platform. So very, very easy to uh, uh, 
you know, connect your channel, uh, enable the smart shopping campaigns. And again, you can get that, you know, you could sign up to on edes.com today within about 10 or 15 minutes, you can be up and running, you know, have smart, shop, uh, uh, smart shopping campaigns up and running. Very, very easy to do. And that's the core thing of why we built it within edes to make it easy for, for e-commerce sellers, merchants to enable this. And, and as I say, see the, see the results and see the effects. Core thing is you can see it all within the same platform. You don't need to log into anywhere else. You don't need to check anywhere else. You can see it within eDesk. You can see the campaigns are working. You can see the traffic. You can see the clicks. You can see the conversions. So again, all under the one platform within eDesk. And last but not least, we, we have a, a spend match voucher. So if you're new to Google Ads, we'll match uh, the first amount up to 120 euros. So, so again, you can get your listings for free. And then as Elena explained there, in terms of the, of the smart shopping campaigns, the first 120 euro uh, it will match that in terms of, of, of on our side. So again, very easy to get set up and running. Up and running. Uh, we've seen the impact that has had across multiple different uh, clients on our platform. Real great growth story and allows you to, to automate and, and not have to worry about uh, kind of configuration or dialing different levers up and down to try and drive growth. You can just run in the background, let the Google smarts do, do its job and, and it's really effective. And, and that's what we've seen. This is a, a client of ours who, who enabled the uh, smart shopping campaigns through our EDES platform, you know, save tens of thousands of pounds in agencies. They were using agency before. Uh, so we're able to drop the agency and save a lot of money, but also unlocked a, a lot of growth. So 60,000 pounds, right? In terms of revenue, they, they saw growth wise by, by enabling the smart shopping campaigns through, uh, through EDESC. So again, uh, Gem Andrews there from superfoodmarket.com, a real success story in, in terms of the UK, in terms of how they've, they've grown. So again, as I said, very, very easy to set up. And again, again, when we when it comes to, you know, you're growing your business, where you can automate, you, you should automate because that allows you to focus on other areas of business without having to put manpower or effort into, into certain areas. So again, that's the, the, the smart shopping campaigns and the Google campaigns piece from, from eDesk. Um, I'm going to go back to the, I, I spoke at the start about that kind of flywheel of growth. So I'm just going to dip back that into the now a little bit. So we've talked about be found, really, really important to be found and to run those ad campaigns so you can drive traffic to your, to your web store. But the next thing you need to be is be competitive. Okay. So you need to have the pricing correct. You need to be, uh, have the correct price for your products so that when uh, people come to your website or web store, they will buy off you because you're pricing keenly. Again, very, very key here to automate okay you, you know if you try and do this manually if you try and you're going to put a lot of effort a lot of time uh, you want to be able to manage your pricing across all the different channels you're selling across so if you're selling across your own web store if you're selling on the likes of amazon or ebay or walmart again you need to automate that that price management so you need to make sure you're you're um you're again plugged in it's automated you can set your mins your maxes you can win sales at a higher price you're competitive 24 by 7 again so repricer.com uh, part of the EDES suite allows you to manage your pricing. So again, you want to be found and then you want to be competitive. Really, really important in terms of both those things. Because if you drive traffic, but you don't have the right price, you won't get the conversion. You won't get the sale. Uh, be responsive. So again, customer support, the bedrock of what you're building, your, your, your reputation, your brand, your trust. You know, when it comes to selling online, you know, being found the right price and trust. Trust is so important, especially if you're trying to build your brand, build your reputation. And how do you build that? You give excellent customer support, okay? That's really, really important. You have to provide excellent customer support across all those different channels. Again, you're going to get customer support queries coming in from email, from, from chat, from your social accounts, from your different marketplaces. Uh, you know, you need to be on top of, of, of those response times. You need, you need to be responding quickly. Again, if you want that return business, if you want people to come back to your website or web store and buy off you again, and then you have to give a great customer experience. We're all the same. We're all consumers. If we have a bad experience by buying a product uh, online, we won't go back to that seller again to buy, right? That, so really, really important that you provide that five-star customer service. Again, some quotes from some of our customers there in terms of how they can use EDES to, to automate that, how they can improve the speed, okay? So, you know, you know, able to handle support tickets five times faster, able to kind of take 200, 300 emails and deal with them very, very quickly on a Monday morning. So again, um, really, really key in terms of, of, of customer support. And again, the key with eDesk here is that everything is together. Okay, so you're bringing your 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 queries, your orders, uh, everything into one place. So so we've built the native integrations across all the different marketplaces, all the different channels. So not only do we pull the messages in, you also have the order information within the ticket. So that allows you to respond really really quickly. You don't need to be logging into different systems. You don't need to be logging in, in, into different platforms. We have the orders and the messages built together. Our smart inbox. So again, uh, we released this feature a couple of months back. 
what it allows uh, our AI module to do is, is categorize your, your inbox, sort the things that you need to deal with uh, quickly and, and as a priority, and again, allow you to respond to tickets quicker and, and in a more efficient manner. Uh, faster responses, so again, you want to automate your repetitive tax, tasks. Talking about automation again, really key. You want to automate things you can. Uh, auto responders, auto translation, allows you to provide 24 by 7 support without necessarily having a 24 by 7 uh, customer care team in place. And insights, you know, you want to understand what products are causing you problems, what issues are bubbling up. Uh, you know, you want to get on top of those customer support problems before they become an issue and before they hurt your reputation. So again, you want to be found, you want to be competitive, you want to have the right price, you want to provide excellent customer support, right? That's how you build your trust, build your brand. Really, really, really important, okay? Um, and then be trusted. So I, I already have stressed this a lot, but that's how you build your brand, your reputation. Again, uh, the, the stats are overwhelming when you look at this, right? In terms of, and you, you can look up there's lots of research out there that will show you this, but 85% of customers are more likely to give a review after a positive experience if an email is sent as a follow-up, okay? 85%, 90% of customers will contact customer service before leaving a review. And then 44% of customers will always check online, uh, will check reviews online before making a purchase, okay? So again, uh, you know, nearly one and two are going to check out your reviews, look across the different uh, components of the web and see if they can trust you to make a purchase off you. So again, uh, reviews are such an important part of building that trust, building that reputation, building that brand. Uh, and again, it's a really key thing that you, you, you do that as part of, the, of that kind of, again, the flywheel of, of growth. And again, you need to be managing your, your trust across all these different channels. So be it uh, Amazon and eBay, be it if you use Trustpilot on your own web store website, We've just uh, launched a new integration with Google My Business. So again, allowing you to get that, you know, that reputation across all, all those different footprints online because because consumers will look across those different channels, right? They will check you out in multiple different places, especially for the higher purchases, okay? They're going to do the, their due diligence. They're going to check things out before you do it. So really important that you you build that, build that reputation, build that trust. When you give the excellent customer support, you want to make sure you automate that reviews piece so that you're asking for that review and you're growing up th th those positive reviews and, and the number of reviews that you have. And again, eDesk allows you to do all those four components, right? It allows you to be found, right, uh, through our Google Smart Shopping campaigns, be competitive with our repricer.com pricing tool, be responsive using our eDesk uh, help desk product. And last but not least, be trusted, okay? So you want to ask for those positive reviews after you've given an excellent customer support. And again, it's that flywheel of growth, okay? So you need to be, be found, have the right price, make the sale, excellent customer support, ask for the positive review, grow those reviews, and you will see that, that flywheel of growth, okay? We, we, we see it time and time again, uh, you know, uh, e-commerce sellers who, who, who do this, grow their business, grow their sales, and that's a, a real core thing in terms of allowing them to, to grow their business. So uh, that's it from, from myself and Jeroen and uh, Adelena. So thank you very much for your, for your time today. I hope you got something out of those uh, of, of, of the masterclass. I hope you enjoyed some of the content and the videos. Um, thank you very much for our partners at Google for joining us today. It's, it's great, great to uh, present today on, on this exciting topic. And we're going to hand over now to see if there's any questions that people want to ask and uh, we'll take it from there. Can you just put the flywheel back up? Because I got a couple of questions that might provoke, um, you know, some more questions from the audience, which is good. So, I think some, I think some of the points that you touched on, Gareth, and maybe Odelena, but the whole decision point around whether you manage this yourself versus an agency, you know, what's, what's the sort of, I guess, your advice or guidance on? Because you know, you've got a lot of people in this audience that may have grown up selling on marketplaces, right? And I think everyone understands the kind of why, the why part of it, right? The opportunity and a lot of this in e-commerce, you know, is actually just the skills and knowledge shortage, right? So how would you, what would be your advice, I guess, of, you know, do you manage this yourself or would you partner with an agency to do that? Yeah, it's a great question. I'll probably hand over to Elena in, in a second and she can probably go into a little more detail about the smart shopping. But it, that, is the, that is the beauty of smart shopping is that you don't need to use an agency to, to manage your campaign. So right. in, the, in the past or, you know, in, I suppose even, even in more recent years, uh, you know, you would have to engage with an agency, you know, pay them an agency fee. There would have been a lot of kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, configuring campaigns, tweaking stuff, spending maybe a lot of money before you see any return. And that's that is the beauty of smart shopping is that essentially you're leveraging on the, on the Google smarts, the Google algorithm to to place your ads in the, in the right place to to you know follow the consumers across the different different channels. Uh, and that's that's a real key difference is you don't need that expertise. I think you heard in the video uh, in terms of of you know you don't need expertise. It's it's you can just enable it. And, and let it go. And that's what we've seen across our own customers as well. 
so some of our own clients have been, were using agency before and switched across and don't need agency anymore. We also have had other customers who, who are just, you know, I suppose, dipping their toe into this world for the first time, right? Moving, as you say, uh, Andrew, moving beyond marketplaces. And, and how do you grow? How do you grow that uh, uh, um, audience or how do you grow those uh, traffic to your website? It's a hard thing to do in terms of just SEO and trying to build up your brand in other ways. But that's the beauty of smart, smart shopping campaigns. You, you can, you can uh, enable it and you'll see the growth straight away. Again, we've seen it across multiple different clients uh, within a, a two to three week period. They're, they're seeing uh, you know, quite a significant increase in terms of traffic to the website and conversions. So I think um, it's an, it's an, you know, it allows, you know, uh, we know marketplace sellers are very busy, right? You know, if you're selling on Amazon, you're selling eBay, you've lots of stuff that you're trying to cope with every single day, right? And you might have a website, a web store, but you know, you're not getting many sales, you're not getting many conversions. And, you know, do you have the time to engage with a digital agency? Do you have time to kind of hire an SEO expert? Maybe not. But this is what, uh, you know, the Google Smart Shopping Campaigns allows you to do. Allows you to, as I say, uh, quite easily uh, automate and set that up again within the EDS platform. And again, drive that traffic in the background. And we, we've seen this with, with multiple marketplace sellers who are able to drive traffic to their, to their website, web store. I don't know, Elena, did I, did I cover everything or anything else you, would, you want to add on that, on that question or topic? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, of course, uh, it is it is up to the to every merchant to decide. Uh, I think like if an agency is only going to do a smart shopping campaign, then as you said, there is not so much um, apart from there are a few advanced strategies that could be used. But I think like um, if a client needs kind of some more support in terms of running like an overall campaign across multiple countries or maybe including other media apart from shopping like video or programmatic or needs specific support in in branding then an agency could help uh, a lot as well so kind of i would be a little bit more neutral of course if you are starting up and you you really want to just run a shopping campaign and boost your products then it probably not a uh, need for you to to need to to have an agency uh, it, it's really, really personal depending on the business, but smart shopping is capable of dealing with most fluctuations in the market, like seasonality, uh, changes and spikes in demand automatically. So it's all handled uh, by Google. Can we just talk about data, you know, quality of images, descriptions, all of that good stuff, right? Because I think people think it happens, you know, even though it sounds like you're doing a lot of the heavy lifting for them, you, you still need to pay attention to the the attributes, the descriptions, the images, any kind of guidance or feedback on that? Yeah, yeah. So the feed is actually the most important part. So as long as you have a very good quality feed with good images and descriptions, uh, then the campaigns, of course, will have much better performance. Um, of course, uh, we can try uh, and the campaigns will try to give you the maximum with whatever data you supply. But of course, the better it is, um, the more results you're going to have. Uh, and also, yeah, it's quite important to keep an eye on the feed that it's re um, refreshed regularly, that also you have uh, all your products approved uh, and uh, resolve all issues in Merchant Center on time. So this can be sometimes an issue, especially if you're dealing with a lot of products. Awesome. Yeah. If I can add just to, uh, to that as well, uh, I think this is, because uh, Adelena explained very well that, you know, it's all about the feed and maybe some of you uh, that uh, are just selling only on, on Amazon and uh, maybe, you know, not everyone is super familiar with how do I set up a feed and is that difficult and how do I maintain a feed and make sure that it's updated uh, frequently. Um, and this is also really where EDES comes in. So I think they build out and that's why we love to partner with EDES because they've been able to build out a great solution in which uh, they actually are connected to all the different uh, shop builders, uh, whether it's Shopify or um, you know Magento or any of the other WooCommerce. Um, they build out these integrations with all these different uh, shop builders and they build that feed for you automatically. So as long as you have your, your information on your website just updated with a nice picture and, and descriptions and there's no need for you if you onboard through uh, eDesk, there's no need for you to to kind of recreate that and and start like adding all this information into like a CSV file or anything like that. No need. Like you can just get onboarded through eDesk. Uh, so I think the combination is really nice. Like they take care of creating your feed, and uh, the Google algorithms take care of just maximizing the performance across all the different platforms as Adelaide and I shared before. 
Awesome, thank you. We've got a couple of questions for you, Gareth, from, uh, from the audience. Um, it may be for you and Adelina, actually. If I'm selling a technical or niche product, for example, electronics, how can live chat demonstrate product knowledge or expertise required by those niche buyers? Is yeah. it only for mainstream products? I think, I think that's a very good question. I, I think live chat is, is underutilized sometimes on, on websites, if, especially for niche products. If I'm looking for a particular and electronics, I, I, you know, being a CTO, I'm definitely in, interested in electronics and technical side of things. So I, I will do my research right before I'm going to buy a product. And, and especially with electronics, you're going to ask probably more specific questions. You know, you're going to want to know maybe things about the specifications or, or, or certain other things. And, and that's where that live chat engagement can really help. Because if someone comes to your website and web store and they're looking at a product, again, um, they might want to ask some questions. So being able to engage in live chat, we, we call it pre-sales from, from an EDS point of view. We know if you engage with the pre-sales conversations your conversion rate, your chance of a sale goes up significantly. And we see that across all our clients, those who have chat and those who respond very, very quickly to those, those queries coming into their website, uh, it, it really increases your chance of, of making that conversion because it's, it's, it's building a trust and brand as well. Oh, look, you know, it's, it's, you know, you're responsive, you're engaged. And again, as consumers, that's what we like to see. We like to see that engagement. So I think live chat is very important. Also, another thing you can do on your website or web store, if you, if you have it, is you, you can put a knowledge base there, right? An FAQ. Again, we have a, a knowledge base uh, module within, within EDES, but allows you to put, you know, so if you know you get typical questions around certain products, you can put them on your website. So if someone's coming to your website, they can go to your FAQ, they can see the, the typical, they can see the answers. And again, that helps. But yeah, really, really important that, you know, if someone asks you questions that you're quick, responsive, and chat is a, a really great way, to be honest, in terms of trying to drive drive up some, some business, especially around niche products, because people have more questions, right, in terms of around yeah. specific things. So yeah, yeah. Just related question, live chat with multilingual, can it, can live chat deal with multilingual? I think that question is, I guess, do you need, you know, uh, multilingual agents, or is there any kind of um, chatbots translation in, in the in the product, I think is the question. Yeah, again, within eDesk, we, we, we've built a multilingual capability in there, so you don't need to have it. You know, we recognize as well, right, in terms of when you're building up your, your e-commerce uh, business that it's, you know, it's hard to get that multilingual capability in, within your company. Obviously, you want to sell in, in multiple locations again, so that's why we've built the auto-translation within the product. So, you know, you could be a, an English-speaking customer support agent and respond, you know, a, a, a critic could come in in French and you're able to respond and it will, would automatically translate that for you again. A key way of being able to kind of scale and grow your business using using tools and using automation, and, that, and that's in that's in eDesk already um, today. Great. Um, just flicking through some pricing. I think these are questions about be competitive on the repricer. I guess I just had a question actually because the whole cliche of you know uh, revenue is vanity and margin is sanity. So what, what's your I guess your guidance on sort of unit economics of you know how do you how do you ensure you're actually making money because it sounds like Google gives you this incredible opportunity, but are you actually going to make any money on that item that you're selling? Absolutely. Great question. And something we always try and tell our clients, you know, knowing if you're making a profit on a product is, is, is key. And I know that's a very obvious thing to say, but it's, it's really key. So again, in, in, within repricing, you can, you, can, uh, you can put in those unit economics. So what you're buying for your shipping fee, so on and so forth. And we have some integrations with, with some partners out there with the likes of Limworks and others where it automatically syncs those things in. And again, so you, you want to make sure that you're pricing, you know, and that's where you can set your margins even from a repricer. So you can say, look, I want to make 15%, 25%, 30% on this product always based on these costs. And what repricer will do will, will only price within that region. So it won't dip below that. So again, you're, you're protecting your profit margins, like really, really important in terms of when you're trying to grow your business. But that's where the opportunity, you think, you know, to link it back to the Google shopping piece, you know, when you're driving uh, customers directly to your website, web store, and the person directly off you. That's where you can build up that re repeat custom, right? We know that's hard to do in marketplaces because of, you know, restrictions and so on and so forth. We're not coming directly to your, to your website and buying off you. You can build that relationship with those customers, drive that re repeat business. Um, we quite often see as well, especially for niche products, we had, we had one customer who sells kind of niche books and so on and so forth. And what, what they found was that, uh, consumers would come for one particular product would, would end up buying multiple products or multiple books right because because they were set. so so when you when you drive that repeat business uh, directly to website that's a that's a great chance as well of kind of protecting those margins you know you don't have to pay the same listing fees you know so on and so forth so it's a great opportunity there to, to to grow that as well i think you may just answer this question but i'm going to give it to you anyway just see what you think um Question also with the repricer feature is there a way to edit this custom label skew from eDesk on eBay 
as it needs different custom labels for each channel within eBay. I'm I I I I'm gonna I'm gonna hesitate on that one. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I I what I will do is I'll follow up with that question. Okay. Perfect. I'll, I'll respond afterwards. Yes, uh, and follow up. Yeah. Right. I, I'm, I'm gonna say yes, but I I just want to double check before I before I. No problem. Um, for a business just starting out in e-commerce, is a de is developer help required to create a feed to get my website's product onto Google? Also, is there a minimum spend to use smart shopping campaigns? That's possibly for Olaner, I think. Yeah, I touched touch on the feed stuff maybe just to begin actually, and that, and that, and you're on touch a little bit on, on, on that already, and that's that's the I suppose the beauty of VDS integration. If you have a web store already, with you know, say Shopify for example or Magento. The integration with, with EDS just pulls that feed directly from, from, from the web store and, and pushes it up to the, the Google Merchant account. So that's that's the kind of automation, that's the key piece there. So you don't need to, you know, you don't have to lean too much into development resources and stuff like that. And uh, we, we've seen some of our clients have started with very, very small budgets in terms of smart shopping campaigns. I, I you know, can't quite remember what the minimum is, but I'll, I'll pass over to Adelaina because she, she, she will know better than I do. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right, Gareth. I think uh, the best way to go with uh, g generating your feed is using uh, someone like eDesk who already can do it for you. Uh, there is a possibility to do some manual uploads if you only have just a few products, but it's not really a manual task. It's good to have someone to support you to just extract the whole feed and upload it. Um, and schedule for it to be refreshed uh, so that you have the correct data in Merchant Center. It's very important that the prices that you have on your website are matching the prices on the feed. So if you're often changing prices, I think it's a good idea to have someone like eDesk to refresh your feed as well on uh, shopping. Uh, when it comes to the, um, the budget, there is not really uh, a minimum. Uh, however, I would say that we do see uh, success uh, with businesses that spend at least um, 150 dollars uh, uh, per month. Uh, I think this is kind of like the absolute absolute minimum where you can still start seeing results. And it depends really also on the uh, vertical you are in. So if you are selling very expensive products, obviously you would need uh, a higher budget uh, in order to to achieve this uh, return on ad spend uh, for your products. Um, and some verticals, of course, are more competitive than others. Uh, but I would say, yeah, that's like that's the, the minimum, the minimum that you can start with. And then you can uh, actually in, in Google Ads, you will have recommendations when uh, conversions are kind of building up and there is an opportunity for you to increase and it will show you exactly how much more you should increase uh, over time. So you will get these recommendations in the Google Ads interface. Very good. Yeah. Awesome. And, and we've seen clients start, as, as Alaina says, very small, even starting off at five kind of dollars per day and and then they can, you can you can ramp up right once you start to see the, the benefits and conversions come through so you can start very small and, and go from there we've only got two minutes left this is a very unfair big question but the announcement with uh, shopify um i don't know if you're able to speak to that uh, lena and, and jerome or, or or gareth or maybe just your observations gareth of what that uh, announcement makes for the market um, yeah, well, I, 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 won't, I won't obviously speak on Google's behalf on that one, but um, but yeah, look, I, I think it's it's look, it's an interesting time in, in e-commerce. Lots lots going on. I think this time last year, Shopify announced a partnership with Walmart. I think um, so. Look, I, I think Amazon have been the dominant player for 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 a long period of time, but I think there's lots of opportunity now to grow your business directly to your web stores and websites. That's what I would take away from that and that uh, that's real opportunity for for you know if you've been selling a marketplace for quite a long period of time there's opportunity to to you know to uh, grow your business directly to your web store or website so that would be my take on it yeah to just uh, add uh, like one sentence to that uh, i think the overall trend that uh, that we uh, that we see uh, that we are also creating at, at google is to to make sure that selling online becomes accessible to everyone right and before it was uh, you had your your shopping uh, ads where, where for which you had to pay, which is also always going to be like just a subset of uh, of of, uh, of sellers. Uh, so by making so with the introduction of free listings, uh, we allow everyone to sell online through Google. Uh, and the same is true for this partnership with Shopify, right? So um, we just leverage the information that they have on their website, turn that into a feed, and and showcase that on on Google. Uh, we just want to provide transparency in this market 
uh, and, and and by doing so we can uh, we can enable more sellers to to sell online right stuff listen we're out of time thank you very much uh, three of you some fantastic um... uh, andrew could i just one, yeah. one thing i forgot to mention sorry just really quickly we have sure. Four Google Home Minis uh, available in terms of so if you delegate visit our showcase and sign the guest book, then you're in a chance to win. And uh, yeah, and edes.com if you want to sign up and get going on Google Shopping, we're we're here to help. Thank you, Gareth, Odelena, Jeroen, uh, Thank you very much for your time. Great content, some great um, uh, ideas and food for thought for the audience. So really appreciate you making time for us today. Great, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to take a short break. Um, just to remind again, I know the team um, the team has um, put this out before, but please don't forget to download the contents of your delegate bag, uh, PDFs and contact data before leaving the platform at the end of the day. So we'll let you um, jump and uh, grab a quick cup of coffee and we'll see you back very soon. Thanks, everyone.